It's the Kremlin's annual show of strength. 11,000 Russian troops and more than 100 military vehicles paraded through Moscow's Red Square, marking Victory Day, the anniversary of the Soviet defeat of Nazi Germany. But this year, the world was watching to hear what the Russian president would say about his war in Ukraine. You are fighting for the motherland, Vladimir Putin said, so that no one forgets the lessons of World War II. There is no place in the world for executioners and Nazis. Defending his invasion, Putin claimed without evidence that Ukraine was seeking nuclear weapons and that NATO was planning to attack Russian-speaking communities in the east. But what's perhaps most remarkable is what Putin didn't say. He didn't declare uh, mass mobilization. He didn't threaten uh, to use nuclear weapons. He didn't declare uh, victory. Putin's former speechwriter says the president appeared a weakened figure. I see in the speech that they are ready to retreat. It's, it wouldn't be a big exaggeration to say that this speech is an invitation to a negotiating table. Putin, obviously, he refused to escalate the situation. This is an invitation. Putin has long used Victory Day to reinforce the idea that Russia is a great superpower, its military unmatched. But that image now stands in sharp contrast to its error-riddled invasion of Ukraine. We have seen the Russian military for what it is, and it is probably at best a second-tier military. Even this Russian army veteran, one of the leaders of Russia's annexation of Crimea in 2014, has been posting videos like this, claiming it will be impossible for Russia to win in Ukraine under what he calls its incompetent leadership. But these days, that level of criticism is rare. Over the past couple of months, thousands of Russians who've dared to condemn the war have been arrested. They are not that much scared of, uh, of uh, police. The head of Russia's main independent polling firm says the vast majority of Russians claim to support their president and his so-called special military operation. Do you think Russians genuinely support this operation or are they just afraid to say that they don't? If it is fear, then this is a fear of uh, being not in line with the rest of the nation. The perception of this uh, special operation is this is a combat with the United States or NATO. Now, back in March, those opinion polls showed support for the war in Ukraine at over 80 percent. But that has dropped several points since then. And those Russian pollsters predict that the longer the war drags on, the more unpopular it and Putin will become, Donna. And Jeff, you were at Victory Day celebrations in Red Square a few years ago. What was your impression of the differences between then and now? Yeah, well, back in 2017, there were other foreign leaders in attendance. Today, not even Vladimir Putin's closest allies showed up. And after the event back in 2017, we were also able to interview ordinary Russians, some of whom were openly critical of their president. But that openness appears to have vanished almost overnight. It is much more difficult to get people in Russia to speak with us now. Some of them say that's because we're an enemy network from an enemy country. But others say it's simply because it's not worth the risk of 15 years in prison. Donna? Well, even calling it a war is a crime now. Jeff Semple in Toronto, thanks.